Yeah, I saw him last night on there. So, um, did you know Sting is re-signed with WCW now? I heard he had. Uh-huh. Good thing. It's going to be real interesting. And I heard um, Two Cold Scorpio signed with WWF. WWF. Yeah. Did you know Bret Hart's deals for 20 years? Yeah, they don't want to lose him. That means I guess if he retires, he'll have to stay in commentate or something, won't he? Yeah, evidently. Because <laughs> he's got 20 years over there. Exactly. And they moved Raw back to 7.57 now. That's because the first hour of Nitro isn't as exciting as the second hour. Maybe they think they can get some uh, ratings points. Good thing they're not on now. <laughs> They'd really be done then. Yeah, exactly. Um, did you know that the AWF is going to have a pay-per-view too next year? I wish them all luck in the world, man. Man, I mean... What are they getting real big or something? I mean, I never... Well, they got signed over the Fox Network. That's what it is. Oh, was they canceled ECW and put them on or what? Yeah. Well, Fox Network bought out ECW's syndication cable station that syndicates them mm-hmm. and uh, made them cancel ECW. It's going to be real interesting. Have you noticed everybody's leaving ECW? Terry Gordy's left ECW. He's going to WWF. He's the executioner, the guy that attacked uh, Undertaker. Uh-huh. Do you know that uh, dude... Jimmy Graffiti or whatever on WCW is really oh. Jimmy Del Rey of the Heavenly Bodies. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't gotten a real good chance to look at him. I, I've been so interested in what's going on in the AIWF. I mean, I've said this so many times before that I'm really, it's dragging me away from watching the other other programs. Because you got so much going on. Yeah, we got so much going here in the AIWF now. Uh, what all matches y'all have for the Boxing Center right now? Uh, we got the six man, me, Brad, and Brian against the Mercenaries. We've got but Don Carson will be there. He has a major announcement for next Saturday night at the Boxing Center. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's really, I don't know what it is. It's a, he's, he's, he's had a uh, sort of like a little press conference at the AIWF offices. Uh, no photographers, no nothing. He just said he had a major announcement coming up next week right here in Martinsville. Uh, Smiling Diamond Dave will be there. Johnny Red will be there. Jumping Jimmy will be there. The uh, the match for the Warzone Iron Man tournament, the next round, uh, the Ghost Riders will face each other. Because mm-hmm. they've advanced to the time. Chris Wyndham and Jackie Anderson will have to face each other. Uh, Jumping Jimmy is supposed to take on King Cobra for the lightweight title. It's it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be a real good show. Uh, I got one more thing. Uh, do you know Wahoo McDaniel retired now? Yeah, Wahoo McDaniel is supposed to, he's supposed to retire like back in September. Yeah, well. But he's retired a thousand times, you know what I'm saying? Well, they said he's got heart problems now, though. Well, I, I, I called him a while back and left a message on his answer machine for him to return my call, but he hasn't. So may, he may still have hard feelings toward me over that uh, <laughs> strap match, you know what I'm saying? All right, I'll let you go. All right, man. Bye. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Rick. What's happening? What, are you, you having a good weekend? I'm having a real good weekend, as a matter of fact. What did you think about Roddy Piper? I think Roddy Piper, I, you know what I really like about that? Six months ago, he was the president of the WWF. <laughs> now he's in WCW. That's funny. So, I heard on a hotline that Marcus is getting fed up with all this stuff going on, I guess with Nick Patrick and all that, because of that man on that match of Nitro with that caused him the match with Harlem Heat. You know what I'm talking about? Well, you can't blame him. I mean, this is like the same thing we got going on up here with Neil Leathers. You know what I'm saying? You, you get frustrated with it after a while. And, and there's a lot of frustration going around that AIWS frustrated Neil Leathers. Hey, we got to take a quick commercial. They let me know. All right? All right. We'll be right back after this. More than just a haunted house. to be invaded by an alien. Step up into a new Sentry transmitter and get ready to encounter the scariest adventure in town. It's the alien invasion. Did you hear that? Alien invasion. Open now until November 2nd. Alien Invasion beside the Cable 6 Studios in the Holiday Shopping Center. The doors open at 6 p.m. every night. 
alien invasion. It's more than just a haunted house. <laughs> It's Twisters, the experience. It's Twisters, the experience. The simulator ride that everyone in town is talking about. From the creators of Cable 6, it's Twisters, the experience. Because it was, um, we got to move. We got to move around and it was kind of like the real thing. It was really cool. Kind of like the real thing. What'd you think? It was kind of cool. I got wet though, messed up my hair, but I'll live. Alan, what did you think of that? That was an awesome movie. That was just cool. It was great. I felt like I was with Elka driving. <laughs> it was very experiencing. I've never been through one, and I hope really not to ever have to go through one. Twisters, the experience, now open until November 2nd, right beside Alien Invasion. Twisters, the experience in the Holiday Shopping Center beside Cable 6. Virgil Good. As we look in our children's eyes, I think it's time we realize we need to cast our vote and do all that we can do. Common sense choice for Congress is Virgil Good. With Virginia values and a hometown heart, natural born leader right from the start. Choice for Congress is Virgil Good. Yes, the common sense choice for Congress is Virgil Good. Hi, I'm Virgil Good. I would appreciate your vote and support on November 5th for U.S. Congress. Action. Look who's with me back after uh, an extended absence, so yeah. to speak. Eddie, back on the show with I've, me. I've had a lot of conflicts with AIWF. If you don't know about, you know, we've been having some contract negotiations, I guess you'd call it, but it's getting settled. Yeah, it's getting that sure. Gene Oakland syndrome going here. No, nah, I mean, but it's, it's a little serious. bit. We're going to show you some clips on, as we go on a little bit more from uh, Smith Grove. I told you the cage match between Major Breaking Ridge and uh, Smiling Diamond Dave. Uh, that's uh, from Smith Grove a couple of weeks ago. There's some interesting stuff at the end of this match that everybody want to see too. And it's uh, it's a whole lot of stuff going on at AIWF. It's unbelievable. Hello, you're on the air. What's up, Rick? What's happening? I have a couple things to say. Um, um, this morning I got through on Livewire. Oh, you did. And uh, I told them I, I lied to them about what I was gonna ask. Yeah. Well, then they they put you on hold, right? Well, then my dad was talking to me and he asked me what I was gonna ask. And I told him I was going to tell him about AIWF, and all of a sudden the phone cut off. Are you serious? Yeah. They was monitoring you, man. Yeah, I was sitting there, and my dad said, what are oh. you going to ask? And I said, well, I'm going to ask why they had to go copy the AIWF show, because they had a talk show, and they had it way before them. And then all of a sudden the phone went click, and it went off. They was monitoring you. Them one bit. They was monitoring you. See, they, they'll monitor the I – I didn't know they'd done this. This is a new one here, so the, the the developments keep coming around. So evidently they monitor the calls even after they put you on hold to see it, what you'll say yeah. before you go on the air. Yeah. Yeah, I know because I was, I was going to ask them, and I, that's the first time I got through. I sat there for a half an hour trying to get through, and I finally got through. And Unbelievable. <laughs> is that not a bunch of rip-off? I God. ain't kidding. They had that old Farouk on there this morning, and he's joke. becoming racist. 
Yeah, he's pretty bad. Yeah, and uh, I'd say about the Roddy Piper thing. I thought he was president of WWF. That's what's so neat about this. See, he was president of WWF about six months ago. Now he's in WCW. I love it. Well, there's something I've noticed that I ain't seen in, like, ever. It was like, the WWF's always mentioned in the WCW, and WCW's always mentioned in WWF. They used to not do that. They used to, they used to say other federation. Yeah, that's true. Thank now, you. there's another cage match. This is not the cage match that I want to show you, but down there's a cage match. Y'all, y'all seen that cage match. It's the cage match before that is what's really interesting. Y'all that's had two another. cage matches. In- we had two cage matches in Smith Grove, believe it or not. Who was involved? Well, uh, Smiley Diamond Dave and Major Breckenridge is in the first one, and then we wrestled the Ghost Riders in the second one. So it's, but that, it's, it's the Major Breckenridge and Smiling Diamond Dave. That's the match that we want to talk mm-hmm. about today. And, you know, we, but we, we all time show clips. You never know what you might see a clip of. Who won the match again? Which one? Uh, Neil, Le- I mean, not Neil Leathers, but Smiling Diamond Dave. Hi. <laughs> He's involved in a lot of stuff. That's Smiling sure. Diamond Dave won the match by disqualification, believe it or not. The Don Hopkins just called it a no contest, and we'll show you that why a little later on. You know, so just keep watching. Yeah, Neil Leathers, I think y'all ought to try to get him in the ring. You know, mm. I tell you, I don't know what the deal is with this guy, but you seen the clip earlier, him holding my leg in North Wilkesboro last weekend. And... Uh, I don't know what the deal is. Now, if you was watching last week, then you seen the clip where we caught Neil Leathers taking money mm-hmm. from wrestlers. Something's up. So, right here, right here's why I was interested. Major Havoc actually, ch- now Neil Leathers, I have to admit, deserved what he got right there. They didn't catch it on camera, but Neil Leathers choke slam, or was choke slammed by Major Havoc. Havoc gets the keys, okay? This is Smith Grove. Uh, Dave and Major Breckenridge both bleeding like stuck pigs in the ring. Okay, and here come Breckenridge. This is why Don Hopkins just threw it out. Okay, Breckenridge choke slams Neil Leathers, gets the key to the cage, and him and uh, Breckenridge both attack Smiling Diamond Dave. Okay, now here we come. <laughs> Me, Brian, and Bad Brad seen our opportunity to get the mercenaries and to get them back, okay? We've been waiting for this so long, so long. We had them in a cage, there was nothing they could do, so we took this opportunity. In the referee system, do y'all have like, okay, Don Hopkins is the head referee, right? Right, yeah. All right, do y'all have like, it goes down to co-head referee or? We have a head referee, which is Don Hopkins, and then every other referee, which right now we've got Neil Leathers, and there's a referee that they say that they're wanting to bring in now that they're actually training. Hmm. That they won't tell nobody who it is. Hmm. So, uh, but every other referee hmm. under Don Hopkins is just a referee. All right, just one more thing, then I get off. Um, the Roddy Piper deal. Um, I don't think that he. I don't like Hogan a bit. I like the NWO, but I don't like Hogan as a wrestler because. You know, he's just all, he's no wrestling. He has no wrestling skills. But Roddy Piper, he's just a brawler, too. He's not a wrestler. Mm-hmm. And he's getting too old. He doesn't come out of retirement. Yeah, it'll, like be a gener- it'll be a geriatric match, that's for sure. Nothing like you see yeah. with us. I mean, you know, down here. The title shouldn't be on the line in that match. That should just let them go in there and beat the crap out of each other. That's fine. But True. They- Put him in our cage. That's what I yeah. said. Let him let try. Stick some barbed wire in his head. Exactly. And that's stunning Steve Austin and Bret Hart. Some guy called in on live and said they was just doing that for uh, um, rankings, ratings in the, on the television. They said, he yeah. said, yeah, it is bringing us a lot of ratings. Yeah. When you're on TV, man, ratings is a lot. That's why we're. That's why our show is blowing away all the competition around here. You know what I'm saying? Yes, per. But if y'all had like a nationwide show, y'all do way better than live wire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, maybe it'll happen someday. You never know. Yeah, every time uh, I... Charles, this every time this show comes on, you know, and I, and I mentioned something like, boy, this show would really do good if it was just like yeah. going out a bunch of places. You see a little gleam come in Charles's eye. I decided he's, who needs to call in. He's got them wheels on. turning. You never know what he might do. You know who you need to get to call in on Livewire? Who's that? That dude that calls in singing every week. Yeah, that's uh, him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Take it easy, man. The nasty boys. Uh. That's it. Hey, we're going to take a quick <laughs> commercial. When we come back, we're going to show you what happened after the cage incident. This 
Halloween, you need more than just a haunted house. You need to be invaded by an alien. Step up into a new Sentry transmitter and get ready to encounter the scariest adventure in town. It's the alien invasion! Did you hear that? Alien Invasion! Open now until November 2nd. Alien Invasion beside the Cable 6 Studios in the Holiday Shopping Center. The doors open at 6 p.m. every night. Alien Invasion. It's more than just a haunted house. <laughs> It's Twisters, the experience. It's Twisters, the experience. The simulator ride that everyone in town is talking about. From the creators of Cable 6, it's Twisters, the experience. Because it was, um, we got to move. We got to move around and it was kind of like the real thing. It was really cool. Kind of like the real thing. What'd you think? It was kind of cool. I got wet though, messed up my hair, but I live. Alan, what did you think of that? That was an awesome movie. That was just cool. It was great. I felt like I was with Elka driving. <laughs> it was very experiencing. I've never been through one, and I hope really not to ever have to go through one. Twisters, the experience, now open until November 2nd, right beside Alien Invasion. Twisters, the experience in the Holiday Shopping Center beside Cable 6. This is a song I wrote about my friend Virgil Goode. As we look in our children's eyes I think it's time we realize We need to cast our vote and do all that we can do the Common sense choice for Congress is Virgil For Congress is Virgil Good. Yes, the common sense choice for Congress is Virgil Good. Hi, I'm Virgil Good. I would appreciate your vote and support on November 5th for U.S. Congress. All right, we're, we're back. back. Yes, sir. Ah, I feel pretty good, Eddie. We're coming to March for one week from tonight over to Boxing Center. Me, Brian, Brad against the mercenaries who Butch Steele mm -hmm. has been like, at a, I don't know where he's Kinda been. Kind of AWOL. I, just, I, yeah, I don't I know what. AWOL. According to Major Havoc, I've heard the rumors going around that he's been on some kind of special assignment. I'm going to find out what it is. Special training We're find out. since he's the newest member, since he's the rookie They've mm -hmm. had him out doing some special training. Big Slave deal. Work. He's going to need it. He's going to need it. Hello, you're on here. Hey, Rick. Yeah. Need to get to a match with uh, Cobra down here in Martinsville with your fans and let old Leather go over and try to interfere in the match then. Exactly, man. Because he will get mauled as he's trying to get to the ring. <laughs> that might be a good idea. Hey, I'll go to the match if you uh, wrestle Cobra, and I will hit him with a golf club. <laughs> okay, I wish you could have seen that golf club, ladies. A three iron, okay? I was judging about 175 yards. I come from here, and there's no lie. That club went... <laughs> I loved it. And you can use that club and go uh, golf the skins with the rest Exactly. Of them. Right here's what happened after the match. <laughs> Hey, Sick of these mercenary guys, okay? All right, so first thing we do, we go to the dressing room. We don't care if it's in the dressing room. We don't care if it's in the parking lot, in the ring. We just want them. That's all that matters to us. Oh, Butch still works here at Walmart and Martinsville? Yeah. Told him he needs to retire from wrestling and stay at Walmart before oh. he gets hurt. Ooh. That might be a wise decision. 
It might be a wise decision. He is very miles on invest in a room over at the hospital. He needs it. He needs it, I'm gonna tell you, man. Where was Brian at when uh, that guy interfered in your match with Cobra? Brian was in the back prepared for his match. Oh, okay. Brian was in the back prepared for his match because he had Don Carson that night. What do you think about the new sting? I like it. You got that full face paint now instead of just partially painted? I think it looks great. Looks a whole lot better. He used to go out and find him a tag team partner and just come back and forget WCW and NW on Russell on his own. Yeah. That's probably the best move you ever made. What do you think about old Stone Cold beat up with Brian Pillman? I don't trust him. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> I don't trust him. I think it's a way for old Brian Pillman to get sympathy from the Hart family. He's trying to get Bret Hart and Owen Hart back together again. Brian Pillman is crazy. It could very well be a setup. See, Owen Hart and Bret Hart would be the good, perfect Hart Foundation. Oh, God, yeah. Get more ratings. To oh, they had a magazine, Savage is ready to join the NWO. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it happens. Savage, I think Savage yeah. is going to be gone from a WCW. Well, they said in the magazine that the feud will be over pretty soon, and Savage will join the uh, NWO. Yeah. I think he's gone. But i tell you who's coming to WCW next year. Who? Ric Flair's son, David. Ric Flair's got a son named David? Yep, and he's going to start wrestling next uh -oh. year. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> they've, they've stopped talking about somebody coming to the Horsemen. I thought... James A. Dillon it'll was coming happen. or somebody yeah, it'll else. Happen. I think they're maybe going to surprise everybody. Yeah, I don't know. Happen. We got a surprise for people in the boxing center. Yeah, Don Carson has got, <laughs> he says that he's got a big surprise for people in the boxing center. Now, as everybody knows, Sebastian Kane is gone. You know, and Charles interviewed me right here on stage a few weeks ago about that. Very in depth interview. I like that. And uh, as a lot of people know, Sebastian Kane is gone. Uh, Robert Roma is still with the TVA on a limited basis. Yeah. On a limited basis from what I've heard. Uh, Don Carson has got a big announcement coming up in March for one week from tonight at the Boxing Center. That's going to be very – is he got a new member of the TVA? I don't know. It could be. We'll hey, find out. The next time you wrestle Cobra, grab his snake, put it in a bag, and do a jump off the top rope. <laughs> Plant hey. the snake, plain and simple. They did it to – Jack the Snake Robert, why can't you do it to Cobra? Snake skin boots. Make you some skin boots. No, what you should do is kidnap the snake one day, come back next week with a pair of snake skin boots and make him think you killed his snake. <laughs> I done took one snake from him yeah. in the boxing center. Sold that. We had man. the snake versus hair match. I took that one, lined my pockets a little bit with that one. It should be hair versus I'll... hair because a bald headed Cobra would be funny. Exactly. I got <laughs> $75 for that snake at the flea market. Can you believe that? <laughs> I think you could get the weakest wrestler in the AIWF. You and him wrestle Cobra and that bad referee and win the match. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, Neil Leathers just don't know what he's getting into. I don't know what his problem is. Uh, we showed you last week the clip of, uh, if you've seen it, the clip of Neil Leathers taking money from from a guy. Get this. They caught him in the, in the building taking money from a guy. And, it's, and and what used to be Skull Von Schultz, as far as I know, he's back, but he's, he looks like a miniature Eligante now. Exactly. With the hair, <laughs> he's got hair on his head, and he's Cobra's bodyguard, and this other guy is Cobra's manager, and they was caught on tape exchanging hand money, exchanging hands with Neil Leather just, just not long ago. We showed that last week. And now, this week, we showed Neil Leather's holding my leg in a match against Cobra, costing me the lightweight title. I done about beat the boy to death. I'd slammed him into a door. I'd, I'd beat him with golf clubs and two before. Well, you need to beat Neil Levins with a golf club. Maybe but, I would say. What they need to do is next time you wrestle Cobra for that belt, just tell Cobra if Neil Levins shows up at the match, the belt automatically is yours whether you started the match or not. That might be a good idea. Well, see, Neil Leathers was supposed to have been there on a photography assignment. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was oh, supposed was, to be. Yeah, per uh, and he kind of got involved. Posing as a photographer. Yeah. Well, if he wants to be a photographer, be a photographer. If you want to be a, uh, a wrestler or a referee, be one or the other. Right, it was a slick move on his part to, to dupe the AIWF yeah. and thinking he's going to be a photographer exactly. for him. Exactly. But it meant the next time Cobra's wrestling somebody for the belt, Rick Diesel can be a cameraman. He can be a photographer. Hey, hey. I like that. Backwards. Other. You never know, man. Or but see, the AIWF has done told Neil Leathers one more incident. And he's and he's done. He will not referee in this organization. So Leather's a no Ridgeway more. person, ain't he from Ridgeway? 
That's all I've heard. He might not. He be come alive. into the AIWF with with a whole group of, of of people who training up here, who's wanting to get into professional wrestling and make his debuts. That's where he started at. He's got hooked up with this uh, King Cobra thing. I don't know what the deal is there, but I mean, you know, he's not he's not out here playing now. Okay, he's not where the big boys play. He's where the real men wrestle. That we live by. We've put it on a shirt. What do you think about Shawn Michaels Sid match? You think you're going to jump him? Uh, they said, well, they said that uh, Owen Hart and the British Bulldog has challenged them to a tag team title match the same night he's supposed to wrestle Sid for the belt. Well, titles mean a lot, man. There is no loyalties when you've got See, a strap around your waist. They were talking about the Sid match versus Shawn would be before the tag team match. So if Shawn beats Sid then... You know it, that Sid's going to turn against him in the tag team match if they decide to take it. Hmm. That's, good. That's, that's a good possibility, man. And if Sid wins the bell before the tag team match, what's going to keep Sean from turning against him? Like I say, there's no friends. We find that out a whole lot. You find that out all the time. We find out day after day after day in this business. There is no friends when you've got a strap around your waist. You know, That's like Don Carson's got the heavyweight title now. Uh, King Cobra's got the lightweight title. You know, if he thinks if he thinks all these wrestlers are going to gang around him and, and protect him, he's got a you know he's got another thing coming. How about a Major Breckenridge in the U.S. title? The Mercenaries are not a group to be trusted. We got to take a commercial. We'll be right back. Later. Halloween, you need more than just a haunted house. <laughs> You need to be invaded by an alien. Step up into a new Sentry transmitter and get ready to encounter the scariest adventure in town. It's the alien invasion. Did you hear that? Alien invasion. Open now until November 2nd. Alien Invasion beside the Cable 6 Studios in the Holiday Shopping Center. The doors open at 6 p.m. every night. Alien Invasion, it's more than just a haunted house. <laughs> Twisters, the experience. It's Twisters, the experience. The simulator ride that everyone in town is talking about. From the creators of Cable 6, it's Twisters, the experience. Because it was, um, we got to move. We got to move around and it was kind of like the real thing. It was really cool. Kind of like the real thing. What would you think? It was kind of cool. I got wet though, messed up my hair, but I live. Alan, what did you think of that? That was an awesome movie. That was just cool. It was great. I felt like I was with Elka driving. <laughs> it was very experiencing. I've never been through one, and I hope really not to ever have to go through one. Twisters, the experience, now open until November 2nd, right beside Alien Invasion. Twisters, the experience in the Holiday Shopping Center beside Cable 6. Saturday night, November 9th at the Boxing Center, Uptown, Martinsville, Virginia. You want to be there for this one, myself, Brian Daisy, and Bad Brad. We're going to settle the score with the mercenaries, Major Havoc, Major Breaking Ridge, and Butch Steele. You better be there. This one is going to get wild. It's a war. Also that night, Don Carson with a big special announcement. Jumping Jimmy and King Cobra for the lightweight title. And the Warzone Iron Man tournament continues as the Ghost Riders must face each other. Be there, 8 o'clock at the Boxing Center. Oh, it's going to get real mean now. Hey, y'all. I'm Dean Doyle, and this is a song I wrote about my friend Virgil Goode. As we look in our children's eyes, I think it's time we realize we need to cast our vote and do all that we can do. Common sense choice for Congress is Virgil Good. With Virginia values and a hometown heart, natural. 
Hi, I'm Virgil Gu. I would appreciate your vote and support on November 5th for U.S. Congress. All right, we're back. My equipment's falling off. Ha <laughs> ha. over here, uh... Showing them where to put cue some tapes and stuff, man, so we can show you some more action from North Wilkesboro this past weekend. Big thing happened, and uh, we're going to hit it right here in a minute. Eddie's taking care of getting all that straightened out, so he'll be back. Hello, you're on the air. I guess not. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Dale, how you doing? This is Big Jim. Big Jim, dumb man. Talk to me, brother. How's it going, brother? I tell you what, man, there's so much going on in the AIWF uh -huh. right now that it's just... I don't even have time to keep up with, with just driving down the street anymore. Because this organization is booming, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Booming. You know, you was talking about Neil Evans a while ago. Yeah. I wonder who he models himself after. Danny Davis or Nick Patrick or Teddy Long? Or there has what? been a string of them, Hattner. Yeah. Just, just don't forget about uh, Bill Alfonso, too. Bill the man. <laughs> Bill done it better than anybody. You guys, I have to admit, when I used to watch it, it... He is, uh, he was, he get in there and he get in with him and fight. Listen, you don't hear, uh, I couldn't believe it. Uh, USWA has actually got a wrestler called Trailer Park Trash. Really? <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a, check this out. Now, you, you'll be interested in this, Big Jim. This is from North Wilkesboro last night, right? Smiling Diamond Dave had to wrestle. Mm -hmm. His friend and partner, so mm -hmm. to speak, all right, and I say I use that term lightly, right? All right, Johnny Reb. You know when Diamond Dave came back in the organization, right? He uh, he went mm -hmm. on Johnny Reb and good old boy's side to take on the mercenaries. Uh -huh. Well, they had to wrestle for for a title shot last uh -huh. week, all right? They they the man who won this match, which was Johnny Reb, you see it right there. He won the match. He gets the title shot against Dangerous Don Carson. Uh -huh. Okay? On a, just a simple reverse cradle. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Now, uh -huh. I don't know what the whole deal was uh -huh. from beginning to end, but you can tell. You can look at, you can look at Dave's face, and I, don't even, and I don't even have to sit here and try to treat the fans like they're fools and, and them not know what's going to happen just by looking. Oh, he don't, he don't like it. I can tell you that. You know what I'm saying? The video. He... I mean, I don't have to sit here and say, well, this is, this was so, you could not tell this was going, bull! Uh -huh. It's obvious, yeah, it okay? Good. It was obvious what was going to happen right here. Mm -hmm. Smiling Diamond Dave, a little later on, all right, there's an interview coming up uh -huh. with Smiling Diamond Dave, uh, and, and he explains what the whole thing was, right. and they'll show that interview here shortly, and, and it'll, it'll cover, he, he actually explains why. Mm -hmm. He done what he done in North Wilkesboro one week ago. Right. You know, you, I heard somebody bring up uh, Too Cold Scorpio coming to WWE. Yeah. You know what his name is going to be? What's that? Flash Funk. Flash. And he, you guess what his gimmick, the, the line of band is going to be? He's the black sheep of the Funk family. When I come back to the IWF, it was that y'all was going to be my partner. We just want to watch each other's back. You know, last week in Smith's Grove, I was in a cage match with Major Breaking Ridge. I lost a lot of blood. I turned around, here come Major Havoc into the ring. Where was Johnny Red? Where was good old boy? They was beating the crap out of me. I didn't have nobody to help me. I was losing blood. I didn't have nobody to help me. If it, I, I, I can honestly say if it wasn't for Rick Diesel, Brian Danzig, and Bad Brad coming in and taking them two off of me, you know, because of the few they got going, I don't know what kind of condition or shape I've been in today. But Johnny Reb, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You think your knee's bad? Big boy, I'm going to break it. And I'm going to break it again. You ain't seen the old day, but I'm going back to the old day. I'm going to hurt anybody that gets in my way. If it takes breaking bones, breaking arms, breaking necks, I don't care. I'm going to hurt somebody, and I'm going to start with Johnny Reb. 
I'm going to start with good old boy Leroy McCall. But from this night forward, they ain't seen the locks that Smiling Diamond Day is going to put on them. Boys, that's a warning. You take it to the bank and you can live on Diamond Day, I heard you talking about Smith Grove when you was getting a crap beat out of you. But where was you at when I was in the ring, Don Carson and Robert Rowland trying to break my leg? Who came out and saved me then? I believe it was Doug. Now where was you at? You ain't got no room to talk. I was in the back when you was getting beat up. I was in the back getting my leg taped up. Now if you want to get into this feud or whatever it is you're going to call it, I got a partner. I got Dynamite Doug. I got good old boy. If you want to get a partner, that's fine. Anytime, Martinsville, Smith, Grove, Manor, anywhere you want to go, you just sign the dotted line. Diesel. Man, Eddie just went from one dressing room to the other, getting people bringing yeah, them outside was, there and, and making interviews. <laughs> well, that's kind of a neutral area right there. Yeah, where I was neutral at. area. I can understand that. But we yeah. had to keep it peaceful. Though. Diamond Dave and Johnny Reb. Uh huh. This is going to be. Yeah, it's going to be fun watching this one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, two big gonna boys. It's going to be like man. two uh, mooses or something. But, uh, on, so on nitros, this thing about stain. I mean, I'm getting tired of it. Either he's going to wrestle or he's going to go into movies or he's going to... Don't be sitting up in the top of the ceiling. That was dumb. I mean, yeah. he was up in the rafters like he was the Phantom of the Opera or something. I mean... He looked like it. I mean, that was, that was really dumb, man. Yeah, it's that's the, that's one thing that I'm glad the AIWF is is steering away from y'all sticking to wrestling we're, like yeah it. that's it we're sticking to wrestling we don't have a bunch of people running around with painted up faces you know what i'm saying they're working on a new t-shirt for the right. iwf okay right. and, and it, it pretty much gonna sum it all up it's gonna say that i don't know when it's coming out but they're working on it, okay to get in the designs and everything but it's supposed to say no clowns no dentists no doctors no undertakers no nature boys no boy toys no clowns you know uh -huh. It's just going to say AIWF Pro Wrestling. Speaking just of which. Just a bunch of real men kicking each other's yeah. butts. Tell uh -huh. about that new, that new organization, the AWF, that's been coming yeah. on. Uh -huh. Personally, I think it's just a copy of the 80s WWF. I mean, down to the letter. You look, they've got the honky-tonk man. They've got the clowny announcers, you know, coming on that like clowns. I mean, I, I wish them all the luck. Well, they're not going to make it. They're not Sergeant make Slaughter's it. running that organization. Oh, Lord. They're okay, not going to so make where it. where was he at in the mid-'80s? Exactly. He exactly. <laughs> just... You know about this, uh, I heard somebody say something about Steve Austin. The, uh, all he's doing is what he did in the ECW, man. Yeah, he's just being himself. I mean, that's I mean, you true. know what I'm saying? It's, I like one thing he did say. McMahon was talking to him after he was he was getting on him about what he did to Pillman. He said, you're not concerned about us. You wanted to get your pocket full. You're the promoter. He said, you're going to make the money. That is one thing that's wrong with so many organizations out there today. Mm -hmm. And the AIWF, uh, I am so proud to say, uh -huh. they, like you said, they stick to wrestling. Right. We stick to what? what works right. we don't have time for clowns we don't have time for for sideshow freaks uh -huh. yeah everybody's got their own personality right. but it's a personality it is not some kind of freak show right you exactly. know what i'm saying right. these guys are not out here made up these guys come in with their personality being from their background right you know what i'm saying I from, what you're saying, from their the roots i mean trust me you know, Doink did not go through life as a clown. No, no. no. You know he saying? didn't work with Barman never, Bailey before. He's he never WWF. been in a circus, so why should he be? Well, he yeah, has WWF. I, I thought Maniac <laughs> Matt Bourne was a good wrestler when he started out. Man. Yeah, yeah. He killed yeah. his career. Well, they ruined him when they went to this Big Josh junk. Yeah, yeah. well, see, a lot, of them, a lot of them will do a lot for money. That's what the bottom line is. Exactly. That's what it is. It, right. it, money. And that's what I, That's why I'm glad that the AIWF is not running around out here with millions and millions of dollars. In their sure, I ain't doing it for the money. Because right. they're not in it for the no. money. They're in it for the fans. They're in it to, to, to get out here and give the fans wrestling like wrestling was meant to be. Like the great... So great, Jim Crockett yes. Jr. Yes. Done for so long with Mid Atlantic Pro Wrestling. That is the basis 
that the AIWF is founded on. Well, you know, you can't even find on a local station, either in Roanoke or Greensboro, wrestling for people that don't have cable now. Exactly. Uh -huh. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good weekend. Anyway. Thanks a lot, Big Jim. Hello, you're on there. Rick, I thought y'all was going to start having like two shows on Cable 6. Eric. Well, I'll tell you what we decided to do. The, the, to keep the uh, the monotony down and to keep, we've, we've more or less, maybe someday we'll go into another full wrestling show. But right now, it's working pretty good having the talk show and showing clips because people can come in right at that moment and discuss how they feel about what they just seen. You know, they don't have to just be there just watching it. They can be a part of it. Y'all only wrestle one night a week, right? Yeah, we mainly just wrestle on Saturday nights. On Saturday nights. Y'all yeah. ought to start like a Monday night thing. Start the same time as Raw and Nitro in Martinsville <laughs> every Monday. And put it on Cable 6 and see. And I bet y'all take a lot of the ratings from them. We probably would in this area, that's for sure. Yeah, I know. I'd guarantee it almost. But we don't want to get caught up in this jet stream of... of TV wars, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to get out there. I mean, yeah, we probably could, and but there's also that chance they could beat us out. Yeah. You know People will saying? be turning back and forth. I'm not going to say that well, we can blow them away because yeah. they got millions of dollar sets and all these big name wrestlers, and that's that's okay. But for per area ratio, per area, do. oh yeah, per area. I tell you what would be good now. I, if we could come on like seven o'clock on Mondays before the wrestling show. That well, might would work. Yeah, you you never know. Like I say, you never know. gets this gleam in his eye every once in a while, and when you see it, you know something good's getting ready to happen. So <laughs> yeah, you and uh, Eddie could be the announcers when you wouldn't wrestle. I'll tell you, that if works. I ever retire from the ring, <laughs> I will always be at ringside running that mouth. Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> All right, y'all take it easy. All right, man. Hello, you're on there. Hey, Rick. What's happening? I was just wondering, did you ever get that interview with Eddie and Brad? The interview, I tell you what, I tell you what happened. They was going to do the interview with Eddie and Brad, but Brad called it off. He said what he had to say to the fans up here in Martinsville. He didn't want it to be on tape. He wants it to be in person. He wants it to be in person, so he's going to. So do he this. wants to do this thing live. He's then. going to do this thing next. All I got, all I got to say is, I know Bad Brad is a member of the family now, but he wants to do this thing live. He's going to have to answer the questions live. There will be no editing. Exactly. No nothing. If I ask him a question, I want a plain, clear answer, no matter what it may be. And if that's the way he wants it, that's fine. I have nothing against Bad Brad, but I'm not going to lay back on the question and neither will That I. interview is going to be brought to the fans one week, in one week. At the boxing center or up Cable 6? It could be half and half, to be honest with you. <laughs> Wherever he wants to do it. Wherever, they Wherever AIWF, Brad wants to do it. Don't matter to me. Now, AIWF, because he said he did not want to come up here. It'll either be live on this show Saturday morning or it'll be live at the A lot of Center questions I think Saturday the fans night. want to know. So either way, it's, he's going to face the Martinsville fans live. i tell you what would be real neat, and I'm going to talk to Charles about this, and you know how Charles is about stuff like this. I think he'll love it. I say that we put Brad in the center of the ring, and we, whether... It's on this show, or if it's at the boxing center, we put Brad in the center of the ring and let the fans ask him the questions they've been wanting to ask him That'll for so work. long. Oh, that'll seem cool. I gotta ask a question for Eddie. Go ahead. Where did you get your shirt? Your four horseman shirt? Oh, this? Oh, the four horseman shirt I got on up under here. Yeah. <laughs> I got that. Uh, I think I got the Greensboro Coliseum well, seven years ago. This is a uh, old four horseman shirt. Oh, I was just wondering, because I haven't seen nothing like that around here. Oh, it's been quite a while. In fact, only half for like two months, and then they kick Luger out, so. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering, because y'all haven't shown that. Yeah, well, that's that's why, because Brad wanted it to be live. But he wanted, he didn't want it to be, I think what it was, he didn't want to risk it being edited. Mm. And he wants, to, he wants to face the fans face to face. He don't want to face them on tape. So... If he if he don't make it to the talk show next week, then let's put him in the center of the ring. Well, let's just let's do let both. Let the fans ask him what they want to know. The bad thing is, if he comes up to the boxing center, Charles could where he shows the clubs, he could at that. Yeah, that's true, but I don't think Charles will because Charles is really interested in this bad Brad thing. Really interested. 
because Charles didn't really like the way. I mean, he has no to get. He likes bad Brad because he's he's talented stuff but exactly. he doesn't really like the way he just kind of left everything up in the air either so yeah. i'm sure he wants to hear what bad brad's got to say. yeah i'm sure even old charles has got a few questions that's my problem with bad brad. brad why did he just leave and leave everything up in the air fans deserve to know we know he went to another wrestling organization i'm not gonna sit here and hide it i want to know why and i think the fans need an explanation exactly so. what he wanted to do like you said let the fans ask him some questions i don't i don't think it matters what he wants make him do it anyhow Face the music. Exactly. Well, I'll talk hey, to you later. I'll talk to you later. All right, man. <laughs> come on up here and just, if nothing else, just stick your face. Look here. It's David. <laughs> the man. Look, he brought me some tapes. Ah, I love it. I love it. Me and him just trade tapes. I brought some of his back. What you been up to, man? Not much. Talk to me. Working. Look at him wearing it. Oh, sure. I ain't believe it. Now, Shawn Michael. Look, talk to me. David's on here with us now. Hey, did the uh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling go out? Smoky Mountain Wrestling is no more. It is going. history. Yeah, it went out a couple months ago. Uh, I've seen a lot of the, like the referee, he went to the... He's in WCW. WCW. Right. They made him cut his hair and stuff. I noticed <laughs> yeah. that. Right, right. A bunch of them went to the WWF. Yeah. That's, a That's what happened. Smoky Mountain, they got hooked up with the WWF. They got chewed up. They got spit out. Pretty much bottom line, that's what happened to them. And if ECW, where well, they've got into this thing with WWF, if they're not careful, it's going to happen to them. I hadn't heard anything about that lately. What's up with that, Gene? Well, they, ECW has signed a deal. I'm not going to deny it because the fans know I mean, it. I didn't know. I'm not going to say it. I mean, the fans are not stupid. Either. ECW has come in and they've signed a kind of a working relationship. It, it's not really a deal as much as it is they can coexist now. You know, they, 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 they're going to leave each other. They're going to acknowledge each other for a period of time is more or less what it's boiled down to. Otherwise, they give up. Which now, I still haven't got my return call from Paul Lee or the res- anybody else from ECW because of the message I left on their answer machine. Right, we used so. to be able to watch it on, at, at 11 o'clock at night on another channel. Yeah, well, it's... Now they says you don't even get nothing on it. Exactly. Smoky Mountain's gone. Uh, the Fox Network, I heard a rumor that the Fox Network bought the station that syndicated ECW and told them to can the show. Now, that is a good possibility because the Fox Network is running the AWF now. And that is just a way that they can come in and sort of nitpick and knock out the Which is a big circus right. far as I'm like concerned. On Monday night, when I watch wrestling, I'd rather watch uh, 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 WWF and NWA because that NWA ain't nothing. They've been going crazy. Yeah, yeah they're they kind of losing it down there, ain't they? Right, right. right. I wish the Jim, like you said, I wish Jim Crockett had buy it. Uh, Everybody needs to quit walking out of the ring during matches. That's really Yeah, if you can't finish irritating. the fight, yeah. don't step in the ring. That's exactly. what I say. Good when Jim Crockett had it. Jim Crockett will always be the king of promoters right, in this right. business. Because uh, it was a uh, when he sold it to uh, Ted Turner, hit the WCW. I don't WCW believe Eric went. Bischoff could do with the They'll NWA what Jim, what Jim Crockett did. Because Eric Bischoff's got all this money behind him. I'm not saying he's not talented, but he's got all this money and stuff behind him. If Jim Crockett had had that kind of money, I mean, mm-hmm. who knows? Hey, we got to take a quick commercial, man. Thank you, now. All right, then. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm George Landreth. I'm running for Congress, and I'd like your vote on Tuesday. As your congressman, I will work to promote a growing economy, a family-friendly government, stronger schools where children are safe to learn, and a government that allows you to spend more of the money that you earn. Congress has made some progress reducing government spending and returning government to the people. I will work to continue this progress. I'm George Landreth, and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. This Halloween, you need more than just a haunted house. You need to be invaded by an alien. Step up into a new Sentry transmitter and get ready to encounter the scariest adventure in town. It's the alien invasion. Did you hear that? Invasion, open now until November 2nd. Alien Invasion beside the Cable 6 Studios in the Holiday Shopping Center. The doors open at 6 p.m. every night. Alien Invasion, 
It's more than just a haunted house. <laughs> It's Twisters, the experience. It's Twisters, the experience. The simulator ride that everyone in town is talking about. From the creators of Cable 6, it's Twisters, the experience. Because it was, um, we got to move. We got to move around, and it was kind of like the real thing. It was really cool. Kind of like the real thing. What'd you think? It was kind of cool. I got wet though, messed up my hair, but I'll live. Alan, what did you think of that? That was an awesome movie. That was just cool. It was great. I felt like I was with Elka driving. <laughs> it was very experiencing. I've never been through one, and I hope really not to ever have to go through one. Twisters, the experience, now open until November 2nd, right beside Alien Invasion. Twisters, the experience in the Holiday Shopping Center beside Cable 6. All right, I'm going to let Dave keep my chair because I'm just a real nice person. we got time for <laughs> one more call and then we're going to wrap the show up. Hello, you're the highest caller. I got a call. I got a question for David. Yeah. Who's the man? Rick Diesel. Oh. Stay right there goes Sid, the man. Sid? Uh -oh. oh, we got uh -oh. some controversy started. Turn that shirt into a Psycho Sid shirt. <laughs> oh, I Who's heard that. Next time you see Barry alive, it's going to be him in the bottom of that grave instead of Undertaker. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I, I'm, I I'm a Heartbreak Kid fan, but he should have never, never got the Psycho Sid out of the Psycho <laughs> Ward. And the fans collide on AIWF. He just, he just sealed his fate. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Heartbreak Kid fan. But Psycho Sid is my man. Do you think it's still going to be for you? Hey, no. Psycho Sid is like Diesel. You get what you want by taking what you want. There you go. Here's hey, man, we're out of here. We'll talk to you next Walk week. softly or you'll wake in the beat. Well, it's too late. But when you ran in the locker room while me and Brady did, you crossed the line. You awoke the beat. And now it's time for your ass kicking. That's right. When you walk in this line, then you better realize something. You're not Daniel. And these lines aren't going to keep the mouth shut. We're coming to you, and we're going to kick you It's down. over! This Halloween, you need more than just a haunted house. You need to be invaded by an alien. Step up into a new Sentry transmitter and get ready to encounter the scariest adventure in town. It's the alien invasion! Invasion, open now until November 2nd. Alien Invasion beside the Cable 6 Studios in the Holiday Shopping Center. The doors open at 6 p.m. every night. Alien Invasion, it's more than just a haunted house. <laughs>